I'm Bonnie. I'm in Cardiff uh, in Wales um, with my husband, um, 10 year old daughter and three chickens. Um, I'm part of the Bridge Church in Cardiff, which myself and um, 14 others started as a church plant about 12 years ago now. Um, alongside my actual job, I uh, spend a lot of time helping to lead on uh, much of the community engagement uh, and many of us kind of special events that we hold as a church. Uh, so it's great to come and chat with you all and learn from you all. Um, so the British Church don't have an actual um, church building. Uh, we've met in various local schools and hotels um, since uh, starting those 12 years ago, um, currently meeting in the community primary school in our area. Um, we've been trying to get a building for these last 12 years to no avail. Um, don't worry, the backstory is relevant. Um, I just wanted to speak to you about why and the background to wreath events. Um, it would be easy for me to launch into um, the what and the how and the nitty gritty details because I could speak about that all day um, but I wanted to show you how it fits into a church context and why bother and how it may work in yours to kick us off. Um, so because of the new building situation um, and rather nomadic previous existence that we've had as a church, um, now we're fa fairly settled into a local primary school. Um, relationship building is not only key to the growth of the church and our ability to share Jesus with the local community, but it's also really hard. Um, those of you will know, with no building will appreciate this and know um, uh, the we don't have a building and the one that we do use is pretty much in use all day, every day, apart from our little slot on a Sunday that we hire it for. Um, so relationships, community engagement, evangelism take a lot of out of the box thinking or local and um, logistical nightmares. So as far as outreach and engagement goes, Christmas is a pretty good time to get going, as we all will know, I'm sure. Um, carol services are loved maybe community ca uh, street carol singing we love that no building required um chris dingles etc etc and um, but i don't know about you we often find that visitors off the street to these services or events um can easily be missed or lost in the crowd um with little time to actually kind of build relationships um so what if there was an opportunity that allowed us to actually chat to every person who came to the door that provided space to ask questions get to know everyone who came in what if there was an event where you could speak about Jesus to a room made up nearly entirely of non-Christians? An opportunity that may encourage church members to invite friends to an event for the first time, an opportunity to serve, show generosity and love the local community and our own non-Christian friends. And even what if there was an event that people in the community would be contacting you six months beforehand to check that you could hold them a space to come along? OK, the last one has taken a few years to get to, but what answered all these things for us in many ways is the wreath making workshop. Ta -da! Um, so I wanted uh, I first went to a wreath making workshop uh, in a church elsewhere in the UK, actually, and I loved it. I went away enthused, excited, fully crafted up and Christmased. I love a project, so I was ready to go. Um, but I also came away a little confused. Why, you ask? Well, as much as I loved it, I couldn't help but think of a missed opportunity. Now, this church did a fantastic job um, and has enthused many other churches to do the same. So this is no way in diminishing what they've done. Uh, it was well run, it was generous, it was fun, and it made um, clear that a church was running at the beginning, at the start. Brilliant job. Excellent. But is that where we wanted our touch point to end? Often I'm totally satisfied by my introvert tendencies um, to leave it there and pat myself on the back um, for saying uh, that this is run by a church and then move on to have a really nice time. For the record, I don't think this is actually always wrong. Um, there is a time for a whole array of outreach methods in the world of relationship building in a church. Um, however, I left thinking, though, if this was part of our outreach and our endeavours to build relationships, could we actually use this opportunity further to make it different to any other secular community centre business or group running that would be holding exactly the same event? Um, after all, it's a crafting event to make a well-known item that's really not that hard if you're wondering, so you can ask us later. Um, so don't worry about that. Um, that is done all over the UK, probably by, you know, thousands of times by thousands of people. So how do we set it apart from other similar events? Why should the church jump on the wreath-making bandwagon? And essentially, how could we use this to point people to Jesus, to love them, build relationships and serve our communities? So for five years, uh, we've been running a wreath-making workshop, including during the COVID uh, lockdown year, where we delivered everyone boxes of kit to the houses and ran it online. Crazy times, but actually it was one of our best events for reasons hopefully you'll see in a minute. I won't go into too many practicalities. I know others will do this too. And also we've got a great Q&A at the end. We, you can ask questions or send me an email afterwards. 
Uh, but please know that I'm not an expert in any way. It's a learning curve. Uh, we've got things wrong. We're resource light. We scrape by by God's grace. Um, but there are three things that I thought might be uh, handy to focus on that we've learned um, or put into practice along the way that may or may not be useful in your church context. Uh, as I say, feel free to ask me questions. Um, and the three things I think are reaching a new community, relationship building and sharing Jesus. So firstly, reaching a new community, um, we find that we have three groups of people coming to our wreath events, um, the local community cold contacts, local community returnees, and then friends of church members. In terms of my point of using this event to point people to Jesus and build relationships in the community, we could easily just fill this event with our own church ladies and ladies from other local churches. Easy. We all love a wreath making. And to be honest, I'd love a night out with my friends uh, from church to just make a wreath. Excellent. It's definitely not wrong, though, and maybe right in your circumstances. And we'd love to do an internal one if we had the resources. But in this context and for our desired purposes, how do we use it as an opportunity to reach the community and our front lines to love and show them Jesus? Just a note, quick note on audience, and we can go this into this in the Q&A, but we don't actually specify this as a ladies event, um, as this didn't fly well with the community, interestingly. Um, even though about 99.9% .9 you know, of the attendees have been ladies over the last five years, a few men have attended and they've loved it. Uh, we do pre-book tickets using Eventbrite, we do charge, and we, know, uh, we need to know numbers due to resource purchasing, having a maximum capacity of about 65 right now, which is complete maximum, um, and also sells out very, very quickly. Um, again, ask more questions at the end if you'd like on those practicalities. So in terms of reaching a new community, um, it is community cold contacts. As mentioned, as a newish church, um, no long-term roots in the community yet, and no permanent fixed location. Um, uh, we don't have a regular invite apart from a Sunday morning. We don't have a ready-made community who know us. Um, we've had to work really hard on it and it doesn't come overnight. I'm sure lots of you are aware. Uh, inviting people to an event though, they're actively looking for already to go to an environment that's not alienating. It's quite frankly, very cheap to go to. Um, and uh, it's a fairly easy cold invite as far as church events go. Uh, we found um, social, social media an amazing tool for this. And my top tip is to find Facebook groups locally uh, that serve your community that you'd like to reach. Um, secondly is local community returnees. And actually we have a problem now where we could actually fill most of our seats with returnees who we never knew before starting these events, which is an amazing problem to have. Uh, we want they want to come every year sit with the same people um and i would chat with many of them as friends if i saw them in the street amazing um returnees are really important to that relationship building that i'll talk about in a second trust and relationships are being built and we pray that when invited uh these will one day and have done actually done so stepped into the church service anywhere not just with us uh sent their children to a holiday bible club or a seeking christ um Thirdly, um, in terms of audiences, this church member front lines, if you've not heard of this phrase before, um, is there anyone you might come into contact in our daily lives? So friends, colleagues, gym buddies, school parent friends, whoever they are. Um, I know that personally, I'm not good, invite, good at inviting people to church. It's not quite the right event. I'm worried they'll say no. I'm scared what they think of me, all of the above. But the wonderful thing about wreath making is that we found that some people, especially women, uh, to quote somebody last year, I've never actually invited someone to a church event before. It was the easiest to invite. And they said, yes. Wow. Again, we have to be careful. We'd have whole school worth of whole school classes worth of WhatsApp groups, if you know, you know, um, wanting to book on if uh, not careful crazy but amazing uh, but the ability for your church members to have an event where they can sit down with their non-christian friends with the time to chat introduce them to other church members and hear the gospel preached in a loving welcoming and informal um, and generous environment is a great opportunity so my second point is about relationship building um as mentioned this is the key part of why we at the bridge church run wreath making events um, and how we try to make it different to other secular run events we don't want people to walk out of the door not having chatted to anybody uh, from the church, not having felt welcome and loved, or not having heard the gospel wherever possible, whether that's up front or just from individual conversation and meeting a Christian perhaps for the first time. But how do we do this? There's a few things that may well help you. Um, so table hosts, um, these are central to the whole event and help the event have purpose and achieve the things that I've just been talking about. Putting at least one, usually lady, from the Bridge Church on each table. These guys act as hosts for the evening. They welcome everyone. We all know it's really hard walking into a new place. Um, they know who's on their table to greet them. They make sure everyone's OK. No one's on their own and has what they need. But more importantly, they ensure that everyone's chatted to. They've got to know everyone on the table. Um, they've asked questions. We actually give them prompts as well uh, in case needed. 
have introduced them to the church and generally built relationship. There's also good training and development for women in your church to take on this role for the night. Um, secondly, as a host for that, for the night, this is someone from your church who maybe is great engaging, speaking up front, keeping them on time, but also working the room to say hi to people as a friendly face up front um, that they've got to know over the evening. Um, generous and nice looking re refreshments, relationship builder. Gone in the days of church beige buffets, um, although I love a quiche, um, but um, being generous in your festive refreshments um, goes such a long way. Um, get someone who's creative to plan your refreshments. Ask the super good bakers in the church to bake their showstoppers, buy the nice mince pies, splash out on some Ikea mulled wine or mulled juice, sorry, instead of the church squash that's been at the back of the cupboard all year. Um, it doesn't need to be expensive to look nice. Um, serve things from lovely wooden boards rather than straight out the pack, et cetera, et cetera. We have a little team doing this, a few to serve, and you guessed it, chat as they do, build relationships, um, and um, uh, and a few to go around and tidy up as the night goes on, and yet chat. There are no such jobs as just serving a tea or a washer-upper at this event. Um, and then in terms of relationship building, what's next? So take the time to invite, not just advertise your other Christmas or regular events um, and, and services before the end of the event from the front and from the tables. Give out a flyer if you have one or simply invite them to your Christmas day um, service if that's all you have uh, going on. Remind them where you meet as a church and connect with them. Say we'd love to see you again. And then those hosts can even pray for their named table guests. Some even share contact details. Third point, and lastly, and I'll try and be quick, sorry, I know I'm over time, um, is just to share with you about sharing the gospel directly. So some events choose not to do this, which may work better as a pure relationship builder. Um, and this is where the lines of outreach and evangelism do start to combine. Um, but we see it as a great opportunity of getting a room 99% uh, full of non-Christians who may never have set foot into a church ordinarily um, to speak of Jesus uh, into their Christmases. This may look different for different contexts and sizes, but for example, um, we have a female speaker who speaks for no more than five minutes. This is done in a strategic a strategic point of the wreath uh, making process after the mossing, if you're interested. Again, you can ask me later, um, whereby we don't tell them what's next in the process unless until we've had the talk. You don't want to be sneaky about this, um, but if you've ever been to your run a craft event, you know that once people started, it's really hard to get people to stop um, and listen to you. So we have a break for refreshments at the strategic point, and this is the first chance for people to um, get their hands on some great cakes so people are keen to stop. And then we pause for the talk before we then start the next part of the wreath making. Now, at this point, I just have to say, um, and this is a faux pas made by us in the first, first year we run it and lots of other churches, please, please make sure that you tell people that there will be a talk from the church in your advertising so that no one attends, not knowing that they're expected to listen to a talk. Cheap event or not, you don't want people thinking they've been railroaded into something that they don't know they were signing up for. Now, it's true that most won't be coming for the talk and may think it's a price to pay for a cheap ticket for a wreath event. But being open is really important because remember, we're trying to build relationships here. So the person doing the talk could be someone from your own congregation or someone that you know locally who's a great communicator, is engaging and accessible to a non-Christian audience. Um, we like the talk to be pretty short, actually, and engaging and usually speaks into people's lives um, uh, at the time, practically as well. Um, I mentioned the COVID year when everyone was stuck at home. Um, the talk just hit the nail on the head um, in terms of um, people uh, were scared, worried, lonely, you know, and lacking hope. What an opportunity. Um, other years have been focused maybe about the busyness of life and the Christmas stress, for example. So many topics that Jesus could be spoken into in a really accessible way and quick. Uh, one tip is to book your speaker as early as possible. Uh, you'll likely find that local women who are very gifted in this area get booked up super quickly. Um, anyway, I could speak for ages about these events and why I love them and the learnings along the way. Um, so do ask me more later, um, especially about the practical um, elements, if you'd like. Um, I don't know if any photos flashed up, sorry, because I wasn't really looking at the screen. Um, but um, yes, uh, feel free to ask me any questions at the end. But that's me. Thanks so much. Bonnie, thank you so much. I did flash up the photos as you were talking. So we got to see the beautiful pool and food and decorations it looks amazing it's a very high standard thank you and thank you for all your top tips I'm hoping that I can get those down on a piece of paper and send them around to people afterwards so Bonnie huge thanks um, for your time there and everything that you've said if you've got questions for Bonnie please do put them in the Slido link that I sent if you really can't do it send it to me in a, in a private chat 
Um, okay, so our next person tonight is the lovely Kelly, all the way from the New Forest. And hopefully her internet will be working. Um, yeah, I hope so too. <laughs> Kelly, do you want to introduce yourself and then will you just take it on from there? Okay, great. Thanks very much. Um, so I'm Kelly. Um, I'm uh, based in a place called Bransgore in the New Forest. Um, we're, my husband's a vicar and we are in a multi-church benefice. So we have five churches, um, all pretty rural. Um, our biggest um, church is St Mary's in Bransgore, um, which is where we do our wreath making. Um, we probably get about 60 people on a Sunday um, and we don't have much team for events, as it were. Um, so that's just a bit of context about, um, you know, um, where we're coming from in terms of church size and things. Um, and I thought I'd just um, give a little bit of background to um, how we started doing a wreath, a bit like um, like Bonnie, um, a bit how we began to do ours. Um, so uh, we've been here 11 years now. Um, it's not it wasn't previously an evangelical church. There'd been no evangelical ministry um, prior to us coming here. Um, and. Um, after about a couple of years, one member of our congregation decided she wanted to run a series of um, Christmas craft events for grown ups, um, which she called her Crafty Christmas Countdown. Um, and it was initially um, entirely a fundraiser. She wanted, you know, we're we're a rural small church. We have no money ever. Um, so she wanted to find a way to raise money. This seemed like a good idea. Um, so there was a series of about three or four. There was cake decorating. Um, card making and wreath making um, so she ran that for a couple of years and then um, she moved on um, and at that point it was kind of like well somebody either takes it on or we don't do it anymore so as the vicar's wife guess who took it on um, me um, and um, at that point there hadn't there'd never been a talk or any or any kind of evangelistic um, element to it um, other than just that we advertised it to whoever wanted to come along. Um, and gradually we realised that the wreath making, one of those um, craft events, was by far the most popular. Um, some of the others were hit and miss as to whether we got people signing up, but the wreath making every year was becoming fully booked. Um, and we we had only had kind of about 20 spaces at that point. Um, so eventually we decided we would just focus on wreath making because um, we've got a team of about five of us who um, who were running all these things and it's exhausting enough doing one. So we decided to just focus um, our energies on the one that was the most popular. Um, so um, I'm not very good at all. the. I'm absolutely rubbish at craft, I would just like to say. Hands up, I am awful at anything like this. Mine looks like, when I make mine, it looks like one of my kids could have made it and usually half the bits blow off in the first sort of fortnight but we're lucky if it makes it to Christmas but we do have another lady at church who is amazing at this kind of thing so she took on the practical side of that organization um, and she's the one who gets all the um, wreath bases and things like that um, uh, which I'll talk a little bit about the practical side um, in a minute um, so she does that. And when I took it on, we then decided that we would have a talk um, as part of the event. Um, now, a bit like Bonnie said, not not everybody feels comfortable with doing that. And it's whatever's right for your context. But we kind of felt like we really wanted, um, even if it was just for a few minutes, to have a talk about um, the reason for the season. Um, so um, we have a kind of three to five minute little short talk um, as part of ours. Um, so that was the point where the talk was introduced. It then grew to the point where we moved it from our church hall into the main church building so we could offer 30 spaces. Um, and now um, it's become so popular that we actually run it twice on consecutive days, um, Friday evening and then again Saturday afternoon. Um, so we can accommodate 60 people over those two two nights um, and pretty similar to Bonnie's story. We now find um, that the advert goes live. And last year, within an hour, we were fully booked and had a waiting list. Um, and it's become, you know, one of those things months in advance. People are saying, when's the wreath making? Um, can I book on? And um, somebody, um, the oh, <laughs> lovely pictures coming up. Um, 
the other day somebody said to me who's not a church mum she said I, I feel like it's now one of my Christmas traditions that I wouldn't want to miss um which is an amazing place to be at um that people who don't ever come to church um feel like that's something that they want to come to and that they still come um kind of in spite of the talk um and we have had you know I've I've sat and watched as some of them the um so they're mainly school mums a lot of them are uh, uh, mums that from the school gate um have kind of sniggered through the talk because they're you know embarrassed or they just think it's funny or whatever but they still come back again next year um no matter how they may feel about that and so I kind of feel like um that's great you know um the fact that they're still sitting there and listening to that message and if if they come back every single year um and that's their only kind of five minutes of christian input you've kind of just got to hope that the seeds have been sown um and that god will make something of that um so yeah that's that's kind of i find that's really great and that's been a real encouragement um particularly when we've struggled to find speakers that's the, the way i met nay was that um last year we had um a last minute speaker crisis um where our speaker had to um step down due to illness and with literally 24 hours notice somebody put me in touch with nay and nay put together an amazing talk and came and spoke which i was ever so grateful um for um so practically um the way we run ours is um we buy moss bases from a florist floristry wholesaler which um my tip there would be um book them well in advance with the wholesaler because lots of people are trying to run wreath making events um so any of the practical things that you need for it get as early as possible um to avoid disappointment um we, so we use moss bases um at, you stick your foliage on with um little metal pins um we have ribbon for hanging the um the wreaths and for making bows um we have a selection of baubles dried fruit bells um pine cones glittery pine cones um kind of anything you can think of that you've ever seen on a wreath um and floristry wire to wire the things like baubles into your um into your actual um wreath um as i said i'm really not very good at this kind of thing um, and the, the top tip from our lady who is, is that more is more. So um, you can never put too much on your wreath. Just keep shoving stuff on it. Um, uh, I feel like I'm rambling a little bit. Um, um, one of my other tips would be um, you can buy stuff. If you know you're going to be doing it, buy your things, particularly if you're on a budget, the year before, straight after Christmas, get to Poundland, get to the range, um, buy up all their little baubles and, and things like that um so that you've got enough um we charge 15 pounds for ours which I, i'm the sort of person i really hate charging anyone anything for anything i always feel really awkward asking for money off people but um when you look commercially these kind of events are 45 pounds and upwards um that people are paying um so we charge 15 pounds we as i said we're a small church we don't have a massive budget for anything really um so we need to make our events at least cover themselves um so we do charge that amount but we also within that money we provide all the materials that they need um we have um prosecco and mulled wine and non-alcoholic alternatives and a few nibbles um the only things we ask people to bring are um we ask everybody to bring their own pair of secateurs um just because we don't really want to have to keep 30 pairs of secateurs all year round um, and people don't seem to mind that. And then if anybody wants to bring their own bits of drinks and nibbles, they're welcome to. Um, and then on the night, the way we kind of run the evening is that um, we have refreshments on the go as people arrive um, and Christmas music over the speakers um, and people find their seats. We have the wreath bases already um, on the tables um, people kind of chat and then once everybody's there I do a bit of a welcome um, and just say kind of hi thanks for coming and then that's the point at which we have our talk um, so before we've actually started any of the craft thing while people have kind of got their glass of wine or whatever um, we have the talk and um, then our lady does a quick demo of of how to make the wreath and then um, everybody kind of gets up and um, gets all the bits that they want to um, 
that they want to get to make their wreath. Um, and what I would say is in previous years, we've sat with our little team of five have sat on the tables sort of next to somebody making our own wreaths as we've gone along. Um, and for this year, we've decided that we're actually not going to do that. And we're going to um, make ours the day before um, so that we can be completely free to go around and help people and chat to them um, because we found it's just everybody wants help and it's too hard to kind of have those conversations if we're trying to make our own wreath at the same time and um, particularly I think with us being such a small team doing everything um, and it is exhausting but we love doing it but it the, you know the good point um, as Bonnie said is the building those relationships so it's good to be able to get up and walk around and chat to people um, as we go um so yeah that's probably a difference we're gonna gonna make this year um we always time it to be the weekend before our christingle service so it's usually the last um weekend of november um and our christingle is our family service on the first sunday of december um so we have adverts out for that service um and that's possibly due to kind of our target audience which tends to be the school mums who come along um but um, we also have um, a kind of evangelistic takeaway materials on the refreshment table. So little copies of gospels or um, uh, devotional kind of books, evangelistic books. Um, all our giveaways are on that table. Um, and I, th I think probably another change I might make this year, um, which actually came off the back of the Halloween thing that I came to, which was um, I think somebody talked about having goodie bags. Um, and I thought this year I might actually introduce a goodie bag takeaway from our wreath so that they can't not take the evangelistic materials with them. So that that's kind of my my way I'm going to evolve it this year um, to try and, you know, just get the gospel in um, as much as possible. Um, yeah, I would say just encourage anyone to give it a go because it is it is so popular. It is exactly the kind of thing people want to be coming to at this time of year. Um, and as long as you're upfront, as Bonnie said, about the fact that there will be Christian content, um, then, you know, it's a kind of guaranteed way, really, of getting people along to hear the gospel who otherwise would never come along. Um, so, yeah, that's that's me and our wreath making. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. That was so, so helpful. Different to Bonnie's, much more detailed and very grateful to you for how you've done it, how it's evolved, what it will look like this year. It was great to come and see it. It was actually my first ever wreath making event last year. Mm -hmm. And I think what really struck me is that it was a really lovely evening, a chance to pause and get some peace in the midst of a really busy season and hopefully hear a bit about Jesus and him being the Prince of Peace too. So I thought, I mean, it's probably hectic for you and the others, but for me as a <laughs> guest, it, it was just really enjoyable. So Kelly, thank you so much. And Questions for Kelly, please right. put them in the chat and afterwards we'll try and answer them. Our last guest is Kate and she is from Southampton, so very close to me. And um, Kate, could you introduce yourself and then go for it with your presentation? Hi, yeah, um, I'm Kate and um, I live in Southampton, like I said, um, with my family. Um, I'm, I'll say a bit about our church background as I, as I go along. Um, but I'm just going to give a brief outline of the Christmas events that we've um, I've been running in the, as kind of a background for the young persons um, event that I'm going to be mostly talking about. Um, so years ago, we were part of a church in Oxford and they ran a Christmas craft night. Uh, they repeated it three times. It would always be a sellout. There was about eight crafts and you could kind of free flow around the craft. Um, it was brilliant, beautifully done. Um, and then we moved to High Wycombe and um, they had an event which I took on running um, and they had a, a massive church hall. And so half of the hall was um, crafts. And so um, we had about eight crafts you could choose from and you'd probably do about three. And then the other half was wreath making. And then so halfway through the night you swapped. Um, and I put a sort of interview style talk um, 
in the slot where they were just before they did the swap, or you could spend the entire evening doing crafts if that was what you wanted. Um, ironically, um, I had nothing to do with the wreath um, making bits. Some older ladies did it. And the first year I thought, I'll just let them do their thing and then we'll get on with the modern crafts and I'm sure that will die a death. Um, one of them made me a wreath and it was so beautiful and my friends had a great time and they loved their wreath. So that's, yeah, another story. Um, so then we moved to Southampton um, and um, we are part of a congregation plant that meets in a secondary school. So we have, uh, like Bonnie, we have the building on a Sunday and then we have no, um, we have no presence in the community, um, particularly for the rest of the week. Um, so we have been running, we can rent the hall and the canteen where we meet um, at points in the, um, the week, which is what we do. We do a Friday or a Saturday night for this wreath event. Um, I'm just going to share my screen for some photos. Um, that come up. Um, so we um, we have this women's wreath night, um, and then the church itself also runs a, a sort of naught to sevens um, year olds families event at some point over Christmas. Um, and then our wreath night is aimed at people in school years 12 and, and ladies. Um, then there was this in-between age. I would always do my wreath after the event. Um, and my daughter really wanted to do one. Um, she's in year four at the moment. Um, and I was a bit like, oh, no. Um, and then last year I caved and thought maybe there is a way we can do this. Um, to let young people do it and to build on um, an event with some craft and things as well. So, um, the oh, here's a few. This is just our our wreath making um, ladies event. A few pictures. It, um, we do oasis rings. Um, if anyone wants to talk about that, so it's a different technique. Um, a few bits. I'll just leave those there. Um, so the the thought of this um, other event that we would run would be that um, in amongst the Santas and the elves and the Christmas shows and all the busyness of shopping, um, that it would kind of fulfill these things is what I thought about, that it would help older children and teenagers and the adults that they come to think about Jesus in the Christmas season, that it would be time for them to spend um, with an adult that loves them. Um, that it would be affordable. I know that's a bit of a relative term. Um, that it would be good quality crafts, that what they did, they'd be really proud of. Um, it wouldn't be Santa themed. Um, I have nothing particularly against Santa. I just think he gets into everything else um, for children um, and totally still in the show. So I said, I specifically don't want Santa crafts. Um, and for us in our situation, um, that it would be an introduction to where we meet as church, that it's kind of a first step into the building for people. Um, so the actual event, um, this is our flyer. Um, it was a lot of work, I mean, to be honest. Um, it was run the Saturday afternoon after the Friday evening is the women's um, wreath night. And so they had five crafts to choose from um, and the wreath. Um, and they could do all five or or, or one. Um, it was free flow where, wherever a table space came up, they could they could move on as they wanted. Um, I took the kind of experience from previous churches for some of those crafts and adapted them a bit. Um, it's very difficult to practice for wreaths, as, as you might find out. Um, but if you end up doing any crafts, I my big tip would be test it, test it, test it. Um, and be aware that they might be taken at home within like half an hour of making it. So think about glues and paints and things. These are things that I've not thought about when we did our High Wickham one. So um, we wanted things that would be interesting, that had scope for if children and adults are artistic, but also great fun if they're really not and they just want to do something. Um, and I wanted it, I was really wanted it to appeal to 
male and female young people. Um, so you can see the kind of what crafts we chose there. Um, there's some icing things, so they could literally, I'm not saying which gender would do that, um, eat an entire massive ball of icing while they were there. Um, and um, there's nothing that's like super girly, though, if they wanted to make some of the things girly, prince, princessy, kind of traditional um, stereotypes of girls and boys, they could. Um, so we have um, bags. These are the ones for the wreath night, but uh, top left. But we had similar ones for the, the young people. Um, it's to take their crafts home. But for me, it's just a massive excuse to, um, to put in a tract for the children. It was a children's, um, a children's young people's one. Um, and Christmas event flyers, which is a carol service for our church. Um, but also we put in, this year we put in chocolates and um, dietary requirement chocolates for those who have dietary requirements. Um, and the for the craft and noon event, we had the instruction booklet um, as well. So this is the event. Um, it was very, very slow ticket sales. Um, we, in the end, on the day we had about 20, I think 20 adults and children, and then about 10 helpers. Um, I I was quite disappointed it had been a lot of work, but then the next day when I thought it through, um, I realized that we had about six young people and three adults that are not usually part of a church. Um, and really essentially to have nine people who don't usually hear about Jesus in the Christmas season um, was brilliant. Um, and so worth doing it to have to just to have a part of their journey towards knowing Christ hopefully um is brilliant and one of the things that I had not really expected we so what I did to run each craft was I had um a, someone from church the church family um being the table leader who was showing them how to do things the instruction booklet was really if they take the things home to finish off or anything um on the day they had someone showing and it was a real joy seeing the church congregation coming alongside the young people um here's someone coming alongside my um my daughter actually um and um i asked lots of lots of the women that i asked were people who don't usually serve in church um they don't particularly want to be part of a, a regular rota but i asked them on a one-to-one -one basis will you be part of this um, and they said yes, and they loved it. Um, so, um, and the wreaths that the kids made were brilliant. I actually was a bit like, oh, is my daughter going to make something that I really don't want to put on the front door? But I loved it. I, I did do a bit of rearranging after hours, um, but it was pretty good. Um, what didn't work? So, um, for our women's night, we do... Um, an interview style talk. I really like that because I feel um, like they're not being preached at as such for people. Um, people can pretend not to listen. They can kind of quietly get on with their wreath um, whilst listening, um, I hope. And um, it's quite nice to to do the interview. They can talk to each other um, and occasionally give um, eye contact out as they kind of see fit. But it's it it just feels a bit easier in our context that's what I find um and um but I didn't feel to do that for the children's event I'm not quite sure why um it just didn't feel like it would sit right so I did a talk it was about five minutes um and I, I talked about names and of God and um and their own names it was very slightly interactive but with some kind of props but I didn't really feel like it went very well. It felt um, difficult to put into the to the um, the like craft because they were free flowing. There was no obvious um, point at which to give it, like you've been talking about with the wreath night, um, and it was a lot of work to prepare. So what are we doing this year? I will come on to what we why I said about the talk not really working. Um, what are we doing? 
so despite there being low and slow um, ticket numbers, we are running it again this year. Um, the women's nights can absorb much of the cost of the wreaths. So for us, it, it it's it's not a problem. Um, and we can keep those ticket sales um, prices lower. Um, we just really feel, I feel, that it takes time for things to build in church. Um, as you've heard, lots of these wreath nights kind of over the years, um, people people discover, oh yeah, this is good, this is well run. Um, they don't preach for 20 minutes at me about Jesus um, and they seem to really care. Um, and so just for the church to really get the vision of what we're doing, we are running it again. Um, I will be pushing advertising this year more to the youth end of things. I didn't do that particularly well last year. Um, and as far as like gospel content, there's um there's a book, I don't know if you've heard of it, it's called A Promise and a Light. It's a fiction, Christian fiction book for I think eight to 14 year olds. Um, but I read it and I thought it was brilliant at um, just conveying some of the awe and the wonder of the Christmas story. And so this year our aim is um, that through the crafts that we'll put the Christmas story um, told through the crafts um, in what they are. Not that they'll particularly be nativity crafts as such, but, you know, like a star craft is very easy to do and to tell something of why the star appeared. I just want this age um, of young people who probably know the, the basics of the story um, to really regain some of the awe and the wonder of it um, and that it's a true story, that it really matters, that it is really relevant. I don't know exactly how I'm going to do that yet, but that is our aim. And um, so if anyone has any great ideas, please do let me know. Um, practicalities wise, just wrapping up, I have all of the instruction booklets and things for crafts and things um, and our outlines for our interview talks um, for the wreath nights and for, for this one. Um, didn't work particularly well for our context, but it might be yours. Um, so I can get those across to Nay, if that's any help. That's me. Thank you so much, Kay. That's absolutely fantastic. And thank you for the pictures that we can can see there. It's really great to hear. And it's great that you're going to persevere with the, the youth one, because these things do take time to build often. Um, and I think we've realised from the others that they can build almost too much <laughs> it's amazing um we've got some great questions that have come up on the slido so thank you for those who put those in um let me see if i can um tie some of them together because some of them overlap some of them have been slightly mentioned already but i think it would be good to hear from others about how your um, how you'd answer those I i'm really interested in this kind of some of the getting some of these practicalities nailed from my perspective um and somebody else is asking how much do you charge for the events do you buy in the greenery or do you use greenery from people's gardens and i want to know about the actual the bases you mentioned the I can't remember what you called it but it's like a foam one but do people use the wire ones do they work what what are people recommending i would really love to know that so could could each of you quite briefly talk about those um perhaps Bonnie, do you want to go first? Yeah, there we go, unpinned. Um, yeah, so I think taking the two bits of that as an there. So the first question, um, yes, we do charge. Um, and a bit like whoever, I can't remember who I'm saying now. Um, it, as as a smallish, smallish church, and I and I know we're not small by any shape or, you know, imagination. Um, in my head, we're still a church of 15 people. We're not anymore, which is amazing, but we don't have lo lots of income and things like that. So um, we do charge and we charge, we started charging £15 and it's now gone up to £25. Um, and in Cardiff, the probably average cost of another wreath making is probably about £65. So it's still, you know, super cheap and people bite our hand off for it. Um, I think... Can I ask, can I intercept? Is that yeah. because... Does it cost that much? Do the materials cost that much? Yeah. So um, effectively, because we run such a big event now, we, I, as it's me basically doing it, do not have the time to rifle around people's gardens and the forest getting foliage. Um, if you run a small event, maybe up to 20 or 30, and you've got people who are willing to do that, you can go and um, forage uh, in people's gardens, forests, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and you could do it actually pretty cheaply because 
all of the cost or most of the cost is in foliage and the, the equipment for us um however with 65 people i do not have time to do that and also i it would just drive me batty not being out and stressful not knowing that i can definitely get all of that equipment you know and, and foliage um because you can't get it too early because it'll die obviously so the week before I don't want to be getting you know worried that I can't get enough so we have to buy it all mostly I say mostly because actually last year um the holly wasn't delivered and someone from church went oh, I've got a holly bush and I was like why didn't you say this three years ago um and now they're going to be giving us a holly this year which is amazing so that will save us probably a few hundred pounds um so you know it's it's well worth doing but yeah the reason why we charge that much is um we that actually covers I think last year our total amount for foliage and stuff came to about £31 per person. Um, so the church members actually subsidise it ourselves um, to make it as low low as possible. Um, we were subsidising £10 per person when it was smaller and now we subsidise about £7 per person. But obviously we also have to pay for church hire and all that kind of stuff as well uh, because we don't have a building. So actually... It's, it's, it can be a fairly costly event if you don't charge for it. And the rings, However, do you have tips on the rings? Yeah, yeah. So also I think, um, uh, so we use a moss rings and we order from somewhere called um, Triangle Nursery. If you want to write that down, I'll put the, put the uh, link in later in the chat. Um, and um, yeah, so we use moss rings um because that's what we were told to do originally uh there's many different ways you you can do it and we get all of our foliage from as i say from the florist as well um and yeah just in terms of like a cost saving thing what you can think about doing even if you are having to purchase it all like for example the first year we had um table centers to make it look all beautiful and we actually went out and bought different flowers for the table centers and things but actually now we just use part of the foliage that we're going to put into the wreath um so we have wax flower which is really beautiful if you don't have it, it's like little white flowers um and we put that in the table centers and then after the beginning's gone and everyone's walked in and go oh, it looks lovely they then rip it apart and put it in their wreath but it means you have less wastage and it costs you you know you're not spending money on stuff that you don't you know don't need um so there are ways to cost save you know ask your church members or whoever or even in your community if you've got a facebook group in your community saying We're doing wreath making has anyone got a holly yeah. bush or whatever um but yeah thank you kelly have you got any top tips on on the cost i think you were charging weren't you was it similar and what kind yeah of um so we charge 15 pounds um and I, as I said, we now do two sessions over two days. So we have 60 people. Um, so that's kind of £900 coming in. Um, and I have to say, we, off the back of our wreath making event, we make about probably five to £600 profit, um, which is great because it gives us a bit of extra to play with for other events at church, you know, for giveaway freebies and things. Um, so, but we are in the position where being rural is great. Um, because there are many holly bushes and um, loads of ivy everywhere. Um, I'd say that is the most exhausting bit of it for our little team of five. Um, we now have a, a school dad who works for a, um, a plant nursery which sells Christmas trees and every year he now gives us a Christmas tree which we then butcher um, for people <laughs> to be able to create their um, their reeds out of. Um, but mostly it is we've got a lot of holly in the vicarage garden in the churchyard um, and the day before we just go around and um, collect all that foliage um, we use moss base um, bases as I said um, and I think they come out at about three pounds each okay. um, so we charge 15 pounds and that's um, and we still make a profit and that's even with Prosecco and mulled wine and a few nibbles um yes. so oh, I, maybe i've just um i was going to put all of my practical things in a word document in, including a kind of kit list and a how to um but as i told nay um we have eight children and we were hit with a vomiting bug this week so you can i'm sure you can only imagine how little time i've had this week and how horrific that's been so um i will type up my um kind of Please list of, of yeah. things and forward that to nay um it, and then you can pass it on or whatever um Please. but yeah i i we find you can do it very cheaply um if you look in the right places but yeah the foliage obviously um is it's just almost prohibitively expensive for most people if you're having to buy it from a florist um because it is really expensive um so yeah just you know get out after dark and um 
creams and dishes. Lovely. <laughs> Kate, what about you? Any Anything to add on that? Do you do it um, differently at all? Yeah, we charge £10 um, and or £5 concession, or if I catch wind that people can't afford that, I just let them in. Um, and um, the Young People's event was £7 per adult and child um because they kind of work together on the craft and then five pound for additional um children um the wreaths was kind of covered in we yeah we're privileged with the foliage that we have um links with a local private school with big grounds so the week the weekend before it we we go and um take a lot of clippings um, and then holly we get from people's gardens and things um it it does take several hours but you can if you've got a garage somewhere um if someone's got a, a garage you can easily do a week before and the the foliage is fine we find um we we put them into um oasis naylor base um backing so it's like plastic backed oasis and then you you soak it beforehand drain them which is what we didn't do one year and everyone ended up with a lot of wetness um and um but like like the others we actually didn't know about moss things so we've done, always done it with the oasis and it's a very different technique so if you want to switch between them which we may consider for next year but i'm not entirely sure to be honest because People now know how to do the Oasis way. Um, and um, yeah. And how, do, how much do the Oasis rings cost? Just so to they work out about four pound, three, four pound each. I get them in bulk. The good thing about them is that if you've got excess, um, they just, I mean, they're in my garage and then I've topped it up. I've already got enough for this year. Yeah. Um, but you can have, you have reams of them left over for years and that's fine. Just use them as and when if you haven't soaked them if you've soaked them that's it they're dead um but um yeah that helps keep the cost down because it it doesn't matter and you get them ahead of time yeah um, wow these are really great to, i'm i wish i, I just made... add something on cost yeah, um it's really counterintuitive to a church to charge for something because you don't want to be restrictive or put a barrier up to people coming in to hear about jesus essentially and so it's it it took a long time for me to get my head around why why would we do this um but if it means you can run it and you have to charge people a bit or some of it or all of it or even making a profit like you do kelly like then i think people still want to come because especially if you make it different to other people's events and that it might be cheaper or it's just very generous or it's very welcoming and loving and um, as one of the other guys said, like people want to come back because it's, you know, someone said to me once, it's the best part of their Christmas. Like, how amazing is that? Like, um, but the charging can be quite counterintuitive. But I think just being aware of who your audience is, I think, in terms of the what you charge. And also, like we, if anyone expresses concern at the cost, we give them a free ticket. So, um, and what often happens is that someone from church will actually pay for that ticket themselves um, and like gift it to somebody. And actually we had a really lovely story of one lady who uh, the, the second year we ran it said, I'm really sorry, I'm gonna have to pull out. I can't afford to come. We said, don't worry, we'll cover it. A lady paid for it. She sat on her table from church. They had a great chat. Um, and this lady's come every year since and bought someone else each year and paid for that person to come as a way of like inviting them in. And she's now like a brilliant advocate and she never sets foot in a church other than that. So just being aware, I think, of your audience with yeah. terms of charging is, you know, a key. Can point. I ask, we've got um, little time and lots of questions. So I can I ask um, for some short answers to this one? I'm going to just fire this one at Bonnie um, because you've been doing it and building it for a long time. How um, How do you manage... I think I think it was you who was saying a whole class load of mums wanted to come. How yeah. do you manage getting the people that you want to the balance right of the people you wanted to, to come? Yeah. And um, what's your main way of kind of um, actually that's a question for Kelly. I'll come back to that. But yeah, how are you getting the right balance? And um, yeah, yeah, it is really hard. I think you could I think you could run three events: one for church people for fellowship, one for community cold contacts, and one for church friends of ch friends of church members. Um, I think we've because we're so restricted on space, we've said to people, invite people 
targeted who you want to build relationship with who you think you want to have chat about Jesus with who you think like where I think the question in there somewhere was about you know how how do you continue that you know the conversations not just or invite them to someone few tick I've done it now you know invite specific people because we have had chat you know things where we've had you know, we could have booked five tables from one one class of people and they're not necessarily going to have those chats afterwards. And it's, a, you know, and it seems counterintuitive, like I say, to turn them away or say, or don't invite everybody, invite targeted people. But yeah, being really targeted about who you're inviting. Um, so is, does that mean you is, don't put it widely on social media? Or? Well, we do. I put it out once these days, um, quietly. Uh, but actually what we do is, uh, one tip is that we, uh, to help we open it up to church members first to invite their people so we say beforehand have a think about who you might want to invite a few people um and uh you know some of them say i could invite a table for just for myself kind of thing um but you yeah and think about who you want to invite beforehand then we send out the link to them first we say yeah. obviously think about it hold back yourself like you know target the people and then we put it out to actually the community returnees who come every year, who I have a good relationship with now and say, this is going live now. Would you like to come back? Excellent. Yeah. And then I put it live on social media and within half an hour, it's, the rest of them are gone. But um, yeah, just being targeted, I think, about who you're inviting, because they're yeah. more likely to come as well. And like the question says, the follow up is more likely to happen then when they have coffee or whatever. Yeah. That's really helpful. And Kelly, um, somebody's asking specifically, how do you advertise? You mentioned school mums. Do you have links with the local school, word of mouth, use social media? How do you go about it? Um, yeah, so um I'm I'm a TA at the local school and um we've we obviously we've got eight kids. So at various points we've had kind of kids in most year groups at the local school as well. Um so kind of um word of mouth. Um, but then we use our local Facebook. Um, most of the mums in the village tend to operate via Facebook. Um, but very similarly, we always say to church people first, invite, you know, who you're going to invite. Let me know if you want to come. Um, we don't do it through Eventbrite. It's I always take the bookings. It's no one comes to the wreath making except through me. So um, basically they book um those people first um and returnees and then I put it out on social media and very similarly we are full then within an hour with a waiting list um so yeah same really interesting um okay I'm just checking the other questions whether we've covered everything um yeah okay a good one to end with Kate <laughs> Kate, it sounds like a lot of organisations needed. What's helped you keep a good heart about it all when it's hectic and stressful? And I could have asked that question myself, Kate, because I find December, I hate December. It's too much for me. And there's sort of another event, but I'm there thinking, oh, maybe we could have a wreath making event as well. How do you manage to, do you manage to keep a good heart or what things have helped you? Um, oh, do you know what? It's totally my bag. I love organising things. Um, I i love christmas i just love the opportunity i am quite happily at the moment listening to christmas songs getting uh thinking about well you know i i plan these events from sort of july so um i think that's just and you'll find other people that have a heart kind of like that that just love christmas and love um yeah love organizing hopefully every church has got one um and I yeah. think when you've seen, when you've done it a few years, I think that helps keep your heart because you you get encouraged by who comes along and by people asking you in July, what is the date this year? Um, this is what starts my Christmas. Um, please let me know. Um, and that's encouraging. Yeah. But, yeah. Thank you. And for I don't know whether one of you would speak to this. How can we encourage church members? We've touched on it a little bit, but how to to follow up with the people they invite to the events instead of thinking, job done, end goal of evangelism achieved. Um, I think I think it's important to have um a kind of a, a target follow up event, as it were, after your event. So for us, it's that Chris Dingle service. Um, the following Sunday which again has a crafty element to it but you bring your kids along and you we we make our Christingles within the service so everybody makes their own as the service goes along um so you know it's the school mums who you will then see in the playground and go oh you um it was great to see you at the wreath making are you coming to the Christingle um 
and you know just to have something that it's easy for people to follow up with um rather than them having to kind of like broach the subject without um without something else um to help them kind of thing i think that's that's a useful thing that they've got something else they can then invite them to um yeah. as a follow on lovely and um there was a question about whether an interview a testimony is okay does it, what should be in the talk uh, you we've mentioned an interview one of you does an interview I can't remember who it was but are there any other thoughts about the content of the talk um that you've had I think it depends on your audience probably um as well but it and also who you who you can find to do it so if you you know if you want to use somebody who's maybe not done this much before and what you know wants to use it as a bit of a development opportunity then you maybe you might do a bit more of an interview style um it you know you might you might have someone do a few minute you know more traditional talk I think as I mentioned um doing doing something that practically speaks to people we find works well like I said even COVID you know or maybe Christmas stress especially if there's a lot of like females in the room or whatever it is um or you know like Nay was saying about peace like we love making events the events like just a really nice evening out and just a break for for people so speaking into that um is is not a bad idea either but it probably depends who's doing it and who your audience is um yeah but don't be afraid to even if it's just a couple of minute interview like don't be afraid to to do it yeah okay i'm gonna i'm gonna wrap us up because we've i mean <laughs> Bonnie did say earlier that she could talk about this all day it sounds like I could I could talk I've got so many questions in order to run an event but thank you so much all three of you it's absolutely brilliant to hear all those different ideas um and lots of practical things along the way as well um I'm going to mention at this point the event that we have in um London on the I should know the date just like that. The sixth, I think it's the 16th of November, um, where we're actually having some training for women. Thank you, Nay. She's got it up there. Um, to help encourage, nurture, support one another in actually preparing little talks, although they could also be interviews or testimonies or spoken words. Um, and I guess we're partly prepared, we've partly organised that event on the back of this one because we're aware that if there's, I think there was 80 people booked into this <laughs> event. So lots of people are planning these events, but we know from the experience of Kelly, it was actually, I don't, Kelly may not remember, but Kelly put it on Facebook last year that she suddenly was short of a speaker and I connected her to Nay, but what we were struck by was there weren't many options. I mean, obviously it was very last minute, but it would be great if we could raise up more people who can do this kind of thing and and either give a testimony or a spoken word or a short talk. Um, and many of us are nervous about doing these things and don't want to put ourselves forward. Um, but we've created this event for those of us who feel like that, which includes myself. Um, and it's very exciting, and I can't see the date on there, but it, it nay, when is it? It is the 16th. November the 16th. Yeah, November the 16th. Um, so please, it's £15 to go along, and we've got some fantastic speakers coming, um, but not just speakers. We've got a kind of group of people who will be mentoring and supporting us with our talks um, on the day, but also until we've actually delivered the talk, so through WhatsApp and zoom um and people are coming from all different organizations and backgrounds and it's a whole mix of women with lots of different experiences who are gathering and wanting to share and support other women um in exploring um yeah whether they could do this so please think about booking in or think about somebody if you're organizing the event maybe think about somebody in your church that you could send to the event in london to to yeah see if you can build up and nurture a little gift um to encourage somebody to speak at your event um it'd be great if we could find more women who'd be prepared to say a few words in public um nay have you got anything else to add in terms of kind of final notices or shall i end with a prayer yeah thank you anna so much just to say that the day finding your voice is both online and mm. in person we try and create events that are accessible as possible so if you can't travel which we would encourage you to then you can come online and your mentoring will be online as well 
And also, if you end this event and you've got more questions, then please just pop them in the Slido and we'll get answers back to you either on Slido or we'll work out um, how to get them back via email. Bonnie's also offered herself if you've got more questions that you want to ask her. So we will collect up all of the advice, get it written up and sent to you. We'll also send you through the recording for this. And if you have any top tips in particular, then please let us know and we'll add them into our information that we're going to gather and put on a blog. But thanks so much for joining us. Anna, over to you to finish. Yeah, well, let's let's pray because there's tremendous potential in what in this group of people who are mostly silent. <laughs> there's so many of you. Let's let's spend a moment praying for each other. Heavenly Father, we thank you that um, yeah, we've stumbled on something that is so appealing and accessible to so many people. And we pray that you'd help each one of us as we think about these ideas um, and as we try and build teams. Um, and plan and publicize and invite so we pray that you would yeah provide us with everything we need and it is a stressful time of year lord so we pray that you'd give us peace and capacity and space um, and the ability to focus on the things that are important so please be with each one of us and we pray for a really fruitful um, time in these events amen, amen. thanks everybody for coming it's absolutely fantastic to have so many here and it really does feel exciting um, and we hope to see some of you in London as well so do book in, to, in for that the early bird um, tickets have been extended as a result of tonight so I think there's still 48 hours where you can book in um, cheaper for the luncheon event so please do do that thank you lots of lovely messages as people are going The link to the Finding Your Voice, has that been put on, Nay? Somebody was asking. Yeah, I'll, I did put it on. I've done it, it on. once, but yeah, I can see it there. Anna, there's a question that you might, um, we can oh. write mm -hmm. an answer, I think, and put it, well, I'll send it on the email that came through last minute. Okay.